Hey everybody, uh, Greg Phillips here. This is my solution video for the third iteration of the Enterprise DNA problem of the week, uh, this time on time and wage data. Uh, I'd just like to take a moment to congratulate everybody who participated in this problem of the week and thank everybody for their comments. I know that the Power BI community is going to be richer for it. Um, I also hope that you are able to uh, find this project problem engaging and that the descriptions of the solutions that others found uh, proved illuminating for you. Okay, so to start, let's navigate to the uh, open a browser and navigate to the Enterprise DNA forum and the problem of the week category, uh, which you can find here. Just scroll down and where is it here? There we go. Uh, once we find it, we can see the problem of the week number three and we can get the description of what the problem is. So um, a couple of uh, rules um, that we have for this challenge. Uh, is that uh, wages are going to be calculated based on the normal hours. Up to eight hours a day are going to be paid at straight time. Overtime hours above eight hours per day or on weekends are going to be paid at time and a half. And holiday hours are going to be paid at double time. Um, so let's get started here. How I solved it, I'll switch over to Power BI. And for me, I started with the calculated column solution first. So we'll have a look at that. Um, just to, to note, I've added a few basic slicers up here. Uh, reset slicers button and bookmark uh, for me to, to help my development. And I've also uh, chosen the uh, storm theme. I'm on a bit of a blue kick these days. So, so here, so the first thing I did was um, I'm going to go to the uh, timetable and I'm going to calculate a formula to calculate the regular hours. So what I have here uh, is, I, uh, actually before I get started, I'll mention a couple of, couple of things. Um, I always try to um, use many variables, and I always prefix my variables with an underscore. It kind of makes it easier for me to read my code, and also means that I don't accidentally choose a column by mistake when I'm using the built-in IntelliSense. In the DAX editor window. Uh, the other thing I like to do is I like to hold control and roll the mouse wheel and I can increase the size of the, the text in the wheel or sorry in the DAX editor window uh, for me to use anytime. So here we go. Um, all I'm doing is getting the hours from the table, putting it into a variable and then I'm calculating some booleans uh, for um, if it's a holiday day if it's a weekend day or if it's a regular regular day. Sorry, I'm leveraging a data model to determine if it's a holiday or a weekend day. And then I'm using um, the two values I've already calculated in order to determine uh, the third one. Finally, I'll use a switch true statement where I'm checking for uh, the regular hours uh, the other twos are the other holiday story and weekends are going to be blank, and if it's a regular day, I want to return the hours up to eight hours, and then I'll use the return result construct. Um, I'll do pretty much exactly the same thing for uh, overtime hours. Um, I'll only be changing the switch true uh, statement. Here we'll be returning the hours. Um, all of the hours for a weekend day, or if it's a regular day, I'll be returning the hours above eight hours. For the holiday hours, I'll be changing it to uh, return all of the hours if it's a holiday day, or I'll be returning blanks for if it's a weekend day or a regular day. Now let's move on to the wages. Uh, I'm going to leverage um, the the calculated column I just made for regular hours. I'm going to determine um, the appropriate uh, wages by using um, the wage type of straight time. I get the employee's uh, hourly wage from the data model here, and then I can use a uh, lookup value to get the multiplier from the disconnected wage types table. To apply. Finally, I can calculate the result uh, simply hours times rate times multiplier, and I return that. I'll do a similar thing uh, for overtime where I just change the wage type to time and a half, 
I do a similar thing for holiday wages. I just change the time to double time. Finally, I'll do a uh, simple sum to make the uh, total value available to me. And I'll come back here and start adding these columns into uh, my table here. So let's see what we have. we have. Regular hours, overtime hours, holiday hours, regular wages, overtime wages, and holiday wages. And uh, I'll put the, uh, the sum of wages in there as well. One thing that I want you to notice is that I do have totals here for all the columns. Um, that's something we're going to come back to in a few minutes. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the second part of the solution uh, for measures. Um, I'm going to do very much the same thing uh, that I did for calculated columns, but this time I'm going to make one small change. Um, I don't have access to um, the time value directly uh, from the table. So I'm going to use a selected value here to get the time, uh, sorry, to get the hours associated with the particular time entry that's being displayed in the visual. So other than that, the code is exactly the same as it was for the calculated column version. So, and I've done a very similar thing for the overtime hours and the holiday hours. Same rules. Uh, as for calculated columns. With respect to the wages, um, those are calculated very much in the same way and so on. Regular wages um, have uh, the only difference from the calculated columns is this time instead of using the calculated column value, I'm using the measure value that I calculated. Um, so that's the regular wages. I do the same thing for the overtime wages and the same thing for the holiday wages. Then I'm going to write a, um, a simple sum uh, measure for the total wages. And now let's add those into, um, into the table. So regular hours, overtime hours, holiday hours, regular wages, overtime wages, and holiday wages. So they all come in uh, fine. I'm also going to add in my total wages as well. And here's where uh, one of the points I want you to notice. By default, uh, none of those values, or sorry, none of those measures that I added came up with um, totals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of all my measures here. All right, uh, one of the things that we have to do uh, in order to, to see total values for measures uh, and have them be correct is to use uh, the fix incorrect totals pattern. Um, and I've described it on the Enterprise DNA forum. I'll have a link to that post uh, down below. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I, or sorry, what I have done is I created a couple of new measures um, that use virtual tables to mimic the physical table that I have here. So for total hours, I use the summarize construct to create, excuse me, a visual, uh, sorry, a virtual table with uh, a time ID and the hours. And then I use uh, a sumx iterator over the virtual table to calculate the value. And now when I bring that in, sorry, it's not coming in. I bring that in. So there's my uh, total hours, and I do see that I have a total now. Uh, I'm going to do a similar thing for wages, but I'm going to take a slightly different approach. Uh, this time, um, instead of uh, calculating it for everyone, uh, I'm just going to calculate it for the total. Uh, so again, I use a summarized construct over the timetable, and I create this time an exact uh, mimic of my physical table and uh, I'm going to use the add columns construct uh, around the summarize to create a uh, an additional column for total wages where I'm leveraging 
the measure that I already calculated. Um, and now when I come down to the result, I'm going to use uh, my measure that I've already calculated uh, if I'm on an individual time row or I'm going to use uh, some X iterator over my virtual table if I'm on the total row. So that all uh, works. Now that I add that in, I can see that now I have my wages and I do have my total value as well. One of the other differences, uh, I forgot to add this in for the calculated column, but uh, you can see this as well. Let's put a, uh, a simple bar chart in for, um, for the measures. Um, if I have a basic bar chart and I add in my total wages and this for values and I add for departments, and I add that in on the axis and wage types in on the legend. You'll see I don't get any values here. Uh, this is part of the, the fixed incorrect totals issue. Uh, and some uh, the best way to, that I found to fix this is just to, to use the virtual table and change the measure up. So I'll take out the one without the virtual table. I'll add in the one with the virtual table and boom, there you go. So I can see that I have my three departments and my three wage types and uh, it's all good. Okay, so that's uh, my solution. I do have um, a, a few notes on the differences that I found between measures and calculated columns, and I wanted just to go over them very quickly. Um, for me, uh, the benefits of using measures is that they are best practice, and they are not calculated when the model is refreshed, but rather only when the model is used uh, or sorry, only when uh, the measure is actually used in a visual. Um, as a, a con for them is that it does take a little bit of extra uh, DAX code when we're working with virtual tables to represent things so that you can get properly calculated totals. Not a big thing, but it is a thing. Um, as far as calculated columns go, uh, I do find that calculated columns are easier to learn and easier to visualize and will be a very familiar starting place for those coming from Excel. Um, however, one of the limitations of calculated columns is that they are actually physically created in the data model and they do increase the size of your data model and will uh, therefore decrease the performance of your report a bit. Uh, the general rule is you should not create calculated columns on fact tables. Uh, if you have to create uh, calculated columns, try to do it on dimension tables. And those of you who have seen some of my challenge entries uh, for the, the past Enterprise DNA challenges will note that I used uh, categorization uh, to, uh, sorry, I used calculated columns to add categorization to some dimension tables where there were many, many uh, dimensions uh, to be shown. So anyway, that's my um, solution. And I hope that uh, you were able to find something useful in it. And if you did, uh, please throw the video a like. And uh, please also subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel uh, so that you are uh, informed of any new content that comes out. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye for now.